able to provide enough evidence to prove who had orchestrated the Lufthansa heist. There was nobody to corroborate what Henry had to say because the other people who were participating in the robbery for the most part were dead. Far from the streets of Brooklyn, life as a government rat hiding out in Omaha was miserable for Henry. His alcohol and drug abuse were out of control. He would get drunk and shoot his mouth off. Uh, I, I sent him various places, or he appeared various places in, in disguise over the course of the years. And the, the minute he would get to whoever he was meeting with, he would say, under these, this disguise, I'm Henry Hill. The first time he blew his cover, the Justice Department moved the family to a small town in Kentucky. Henry and his wife ran into problems there, too. Karen repeatedly called her parents. And whenever Henry was drunk, he would tell perfect strangers he was a mob informant. They were relocated yet again, this time near Seattle, Washington. They violated every rule of the witness protection program you could violate. Henry decided and Karen decided that the marshals would tell them what they had to do and then they, they would do whatever they wanted to do. He was always getting arrested for drunk driving. Um, he was getting arrested for disorderly conduct. Henry simply could not stay out of trouble. One day in November 1981, his lawyer in New York received a strange phone call. Henry called me from wherever Henry was and said to me, uh, I just got married. And I said, you did? To who? And he said, to Sherry. And I said, well, you can't do that because you're already married. And he said, not to worry. Uh, I married her under my new name. So therefore, I'm not committing bigamy. It was a drunken fling. You know, it was just, it was my insanity. One more time, my drunken insanity. Henry's lawyer had the marriage annulled. But the 39-year-old ex-con had bigger problems. In 1982, he blew his cover for the last time. Finally, they just pulled the plug, and they said, look, this guy is not somebody who, who is dependable in any way. He's reckless in his behavior, and uh, you know, we're not going to keep him in the, protection, in, the, in the program anymore. The Hills were kicked out of the witness protection program after two years. No longer shielded by the U.S. Marshals, Henry Hill would come out of hiding to tell his story to the world. Wise guy Henry Hill was not cut out for life in the witness protection program. His drug abuse, messy affairs, and unstable personality made him a big risk for the government. After two years of living anonymously, Hill, his wife Karen, and their two children were forced out of the program in 1982. But the FBI still needed what he could provide, information about the New York mob. Henry says the Bureau gave him $1,500 a month for rent and living expenses. Henry's relationship with the federal government was on shaky ground. So, too, was his marriage. Our marriage started to deteriorate a few years into uh, when I went into the Witness Protection Program. I was too selfish and self-absorbed, you know, at that time to, uh, to even try to uh, salvage it. He was a person that was only interested in himself. I don't think he devoted any time to the marriage. I don't think he gave Karen the respect that she deserved. What had begun to absorb Henry's time was telling his own life story. He had made a deal with renowned journalist Nicholas Pileggi, who wrote a real-life thriller based on Hill's experiences in the mob. Henry figured that if the New York wise guys were still gunning for him, the least he could do was preserve his story for posterity and make some good money while he was at it. In 1986, Wise Guy, Life in a Mafia Family was an instant bestseller. Director Martin Scorsese bought the film rights and cast Ray Liotta in the role of Henry Hill. Hill received about a half million dollars for the book and movie rights to his life story. Henry did not enjoy this financial windfall for long. Most of it was confiscated by the IRS for back taxes. Karen stayed with Henry even though their relationship was in tatters and Henry was still addicted to alcohol and drugs. By this point, they were living on a five-acre ranch in Washington State. A 26-year-old woman named Kelly Allure worked for the Hills part-time, 
taking care of Henry's five horses. Kelly, like Henry, was an addict, and the two became fast friends. Within a year, they were having an affair. Drugs and alcohol played a big role in Henry's and mine's relationship. There was some heroin, there was coke, there was, you know, whatever was available. Henry, forever playing the angles, tried to pursue the affair with Kelly and still keep his wife Karen in the picture. Finally, in February 1987, while their 21-year-old son Greg was in graduate school and daughter Abigail was 19, Henry left Karen for good. I think there was a lot of relief for Henry when it was finally over. There was a lot of anguish. He knows Henry felt a lot of guilt and today, had, you know, feels remorse for what he's put Karen through. Two months after leaving his wife, Henry was arrested in Redmond, Washington and convicted for dealing cocaine. The ex-mobster was able to charm the judge, receive probation, and was ordered into a treatment facility. That was the last straw for the FBI. The Bureau cut off Henry's cash flow. Hill would have to live off the money that remained from his book and movie deal. He had never divorced his wife Karen, but that didn't stop him from becoming a father again. In 1989, his girlfriend Kelly gave birth to a son. Then in September 1990, Warner Brothers released the film Goodfellas. We ran everything. We paid off cops, we paid off lawyers, we paid off judges. Everybody had their hands out. Everything was for the taking. And now it's all over. Goodfellas received rave reviews and six Academy Award nominations, including Best Picture. Joe Pesci won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor for his portrayal of a wise guy in Paul Vario's crew. By this point, the real Paul Vario had died behind bars, and Henry's old pal Jimmy Burke was in prison for life. Henry's surrogate mob family was gone, and now the matriarch of his real family was ill. In December 1990, his mother Carmela, the Sicilian immigrant who never stopped loving her eldest son, died at the age of 78. I hadn't seen much of her, you know, uh, we talk a lot on the telephone, but it was, it, I, it was a tremendous loss for me. She was gone, you know, my mom was gone. <laughs>